probably watching this video because you like property as an investment. But when it comes to your own home, should you buy it or should you rent it? It's a debate that absolutely rages among property investors. And in this video, we're going to do our very best to settle that debate once and for all. Buying versus renting is something that gets talked about generally all the time, whether you're a property investor or not. In the UK, historically, buying is a really big deal. It's seen as the best. But elsewhere in Europe, it's completely the opposite. OK, I'm going to take the side of buying. So I'll fly the flag for buying your properties. Rob, you're stuck with renting. Or maybe you're secretly happy. I don't know. You're probably not going to want to give too much away at this point. OK, so we've taken our sides and let's set the scene. We've got somebody who's been listening to the podcast for about a year, so they've got some knowledge about investing. They've got £50,000 in the bank. They're able to save another £10,000 per year. At the moment, they rent where they live and they want to know, should they spend that £50,000 that they've got on their own home or should they start building their buy-to-let portfolio? Okay, so when it comes to getting started, why you should buy, there's a couple of real killer arguments for that. So at the moment, if you don't own any property at all, you don't own your own home, you don't own any investment properties, in that situation, which is the situation we're talking about here, there's only two or three lenders who will even consider lending you any money. That means if you want to go ahead and get a buy to let, to start with, it's gonna be pretty difficult. You won't be able to get rates as attractive if you can get a mortgage at all. But also it means that all your future purchases are gonna be similarly tricky because now you've spent that cash, it's gonna take longer for you to get that home, which means until you do that, you're going to be stuck with uncompetitive rates. You're not going to have a very limited choice of lender. And if the market dries up, you might end up in a position, which we have had before, where you can't get any kind of mortgage at all. So while you want to invest in buy-to-let property and buying your own home might seem like a step back, it's actually, in the long term, speeding things up. It's giving you a far better platform to invest from. And if you're buying your own home, yes, it is a smaller deposit. But if you're in the southeast, that 50 grand, you're not going to have any change left to get going afterwards. That's going to be completely swallowed up. Whereas 50 grand buy to let, well, if you're up in the north and you're buying in places like Manchester or Liverpool, you'll certainly get one. You'll have change, savings close to getting a second, or you might be able to even squeeze a second property out. So straight away, you've got a couple of properties in your portfolio. So Rob, that's why I come back on round one. We'll let the audience score this one. Capital growth, there's another couple of huge advantages for buying here. The big one is leverage. So like I said earlier, when it comes to your own home, you're able to borrow upwards of 90%. That means you're able to leverage your money further. So with that 50 grand that you've got, let's forget about stamp duty and things like that for now to keep it simple. Let's say that you are able to magnify that 10 times with leverage. So you're able to buy property worth 500,000 pounds. That means that you own a higher value of property than you'd get from buy to let. Therefore, if property prices increase by 5%, then in pounds and pence terms, you're gonna have more growth than if you owned a smaller amount of property because you're not able to leverage it so far. So straight away, all else being equal, you've got more capital growth from buying. But it goes deeper than that. Chances are the area that you choose to live in is going to be a desirable area. There are some areas that work really well for rental properties, but there are others that tend to be dominated by owner occupiers. Chances are they're the type of area that you're going to target for your own home. And capital growth tends to be stronger in those areas because they're in demand. That growth happens earlier in the cycle and it's stronger. So you're going to get more growth for two reasons, which you can then reinvest into your own portfolio. So again, it gets you off the mark faster and it's going to give you more growth, not just in the long term, but in the shorter term as well, which you can then reinvest into your portfolio to get you further faster. What are the chances of that area that you're going to live in being the best place to invest in the country for capital growth? Now, if you buy in a desirable area, yeah, hopefully you will get that capital growth, but you're not buying for that reason. You're buying because it's close to those shops you like, or that coffee shop that you love, or that really good school that you must be near. Is that little pocket of the country going to be the best place to invest? You are pot committed to that area, whereas the rest of the UK, if you invest, is open to you. And there are areas that are flying right now where are probably not where you're choosing to live. So having the whole of the UK open to you as investment choice, if you're after capital growth and that's your investment strategy, you could certainly find it. Cash flow, so simple this one. It's all for camp rent. You don't have to put that lumpy deposit in at the beginning because you're going to be investing that elsewhere. You don't have to pay maintenance. There's no maintenance costs because your landlord's going to look after that for you. Renting, it's just you pay your rent. Yeah, you've got to pay your normal bills, but so you've got to pay those if you own your place as well. Plus the big one, yes, you haven't got those day-to-day -day running costs, but the big one is when you invest that money, that 50000 you're going to be making a cash flow. You're going to be making a return. Whether you go for a capital growth strategy or not, you're going to be making a surplus every single month, not the other way when you buy it. Whereas if you use that money to invest, 
Yes, you're getting the capital growth like your own home, which we discussed, but you're also getting that income too. Seems like a no-brainer to me. But I think there's more to this than first meets the eye. First of all, Rob, you mentioned having to spend money on improvements. Well, if you're making improvements, that will increase the value of the property, so you'll get more capital growth and you can take out that equity later. Whereas when you're renting, you either can't make any improvements, or if you do, then you move out and it's gone. The landlord's had all the benefit. But let's take this back to cash flow. So if you bought a buy-to-let, you might have, for the sake of argument, £300 of rental profit coming in every month. But if you bought your own home, you might be saving £300 over your rental costs. Therefore, in cash flow terms, at the end of the month, you're actually no worse off and you've got all the benefits that I've been talking about in the previous rounds. Not only that, but if you go for a fixed rate mortgage for, say, five years, even 10 years, which you can get on residential, your living costs are fixed. Therefore, anything that you can save up every month in addition to those costs, you know that you can put towards investing. If you're renting, then if rents go up, then great, as an investor, that's good news for you. But your own costs are going up as well. So you're spending more money now and you might be spending even more money in the future. Lifestyle. Okay, simple. If you want the lifestyle, if you want that flexibility, you want that freedom, rent. You can move. So love where you're living now, but things change for you fancy a change just rent somewhere else pretty simple you can even get places that are furnished so you don't even have to bother with all that furniture moving you want that flexibility you want that freedom to just live where you fancy year by year the renting option is a no-brainer you make it sound so glamorous rob but is it really do you really want to be living under the threat of getting two months notice at any time Yes, there are great things about being flexible and trying out different places and being mobile, but there's massive downsides as well. What if you're renting somewhere near to your kid's school, then either the rent goes up and you can't afford it, or the landlord tells you that you have to move on and you can't find anywhere else anywhere near. Suddenly you've got to take your kids out of school or you've got a massive journey every morning and all because you made the decision to rent instead of buying. And you mentioned properties being furnished. Well, great, but do you really want to be living with someone else's furniture? You can't have your own stuff because you know you might have to move it in six months. You can't even put your own pictures up on the wall. I think when it comes to lifestyle, there's a lot more to stability than you were letting on there. So when it comes to the emotional side, it's just such an instinctive human drive to have a place of your own. Knowing that you've got somewhere stable, not just for the practicalities that I've just been talking about, but for the emotional side as well. It's no fun knowing that you might have to move on at any time. It's no fun having to get permission to do things or rely on a landlord to fix things for you. You've got a place, it's yours forever, you can raise a family there, and you know that nothing's going to happen to change that. So when it comes to the emotional side, it's so clearly in favour of buying, it's just not even fair. Look at Europe. Europe, they're used to renting. They're used to doing it that way. Long-term rents are just the norm. It's a British mindset. It's one that's dated and it's changing. When you have to look at the trend figures, more and more people are renting. Yes, many years ago, people wanted to own their own homes, and some still do today. But the tide is turning, my friend. We're going to the European model, and renting offers so many benefits that people just don't feel the need to own anymore. Two strong debates for buying and for renting. Should we actually give our real thoughts on this? And I'm actually glad that I won the coin toss and got to take the buy side of things because it challenged my own thinking as well. Because of the lifestyle factors and the flexibility that you talked about, I've always been pro renting. I rented for a long time. I liked the idea of my money working for me and I felt that having a load of money tied up in a home that wasn't producing any income, to me that seemed like a bit of a waste. But doing this challenged me to look at the other side of things as well. I think I always underestimated the kind of the mindset and the emotional piece when it came to buying. And I think that is a really important factor. When it comes to where you live, you can't just look at it purely in financial terms. You have to bring that side into it. And when you combine that with the fact that it makes mortgages so much easier, I don't think you can take the view, which I probably would have done a few years ago, that there's no point to buying, that it's just a waste of money and you should invest instead. I think there is a strong case for it. Absolutely. And I think the thing this comes down to most is it depends on where you are in life right now. And ultimately, your goals. What do you want to achieve? There is no right answer for everybody. And that's why we tried to bring a bit of a scenario into play. Because you could have a completely different scenario where buying is the absolutely right thing to do and renting is not. My own circumstances changed and so therefore my strategy did. So what's the right strategy for a person in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, their 50s, their 60s? It could change each time and depending on their goals. So while I think it's really important to battle it out, If you ever end up battling this out with anybody or having your own internal debate, make sure you get clear on where do you want to get to? Because once you understand what your goals are and what you want to achieve, it quite often makes the path clearer on what you should do. So what do you think? Are you team buy or team rent? Let us know in the comments. I know you've got an opinion.
And while you're here, make sure you're subscribed to the Property Podcast. There's a new episode every Thursday. All you need to do is search Property Podcast wherever you listen.